Welcome back to Freeride Academy, the series which will make you a better free skier uh, in eight episodes. Uh, today we will talk about safety equipment and with us we have Martin Lundberg, experienced mountain guide. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, you will take us through all of this stuff. Um, but first of all I want to talk to you about like how do you think when you go out in the off-piste? What's your like safety well, way of thinking about safety? I start in the morning with uh, reading the avalanche bulletin or the avalanche forecast. It's important to read the whole forecast. Uh, after that, before I leave home, I check the battery on my transceiver. Then on my way to the mountains, I have uh, five red flags that I check. I check new fallen snow within 24 hours. I check wind, if there is any wind, increasing, increasing temperatures, if there is any new avalanche uh, occurring to, during the night. And this is even before I leave my car. Mm. And then I, uh, into the mountains, I feel, feel and check for wump sounds mm -hmm. or cracks in the snow. Uh, and we will talk more about that um, way of thinking about safety when going out into the office. So the other things we'll talk about in another episode, but now we're here. And uh, well, we're start starting off with the, the thing which you pack all of your stuff in, the backpack. And Martin, you know this better than me. Yes, this is a backpack. This is not the normal uh, normal backpack. It's a uh, uh, airbag backpack. So this one is actually really good. Uh, the Avalanche air backpacks are mostly more heavy than a normal backpack, but this one is super lightweight for being an Avalanche backpack. Cool. How does an Avalanche backpack work? You trigger uh, this remote here. The you pull this one and there will be a big airbag blowing up. And what you're looking for there is the, uh, the volume of the backpack. It's not the air that makes you float on top of the avalanche, it's the volume. Okay, uh, and you're about to pack some stuff into this backpack and what do you pack in first? Yeah, first of all, I pack my uh, probe. Mm -hmm. Probe is very important that it's long enough should be about 240 to 300 centimeters long. I like it. there's a wire on this one, not a thread. And uh, it's a good locking device that you can lock and unlock without gloves. All right. cool. And that goes into a specific folder in the backpack, yes. right? In this backpack, we have a special place for it, right there. Cool. Uh, after that, I packed my shovel. This is a great shovel. It's not plastic or anything like that. It should be... Never buy plastic shovels. Never buy a plastic shovel. Imagine if you are going to dig out your friend and the shovel breaks. It's a horrible thing. So this one is good, the formation is good on this one. I like the D handle and I like that you can step your foot on this one. And it's pretty small, uh, which is good. And the long shot. Nice. And that also goes into a special folder, right? Special folder here in the backpack. So I have my probe, my shovel, everything I need handy and on top of, on top of the bag. And you leave one folder, one big folder, the one you sipped here exclusively for the safety equipment, right? Yes, because if you get uh, in somehow you don't have your backpack uh, close to you, your friend can actually take your backpack, open this zipper and you have everything there. It's super easy to find it and it's fast. So this goes onto the back and that the transceiver goes on to your body. On your body, underneath the jacket or in a good pocket. Either you, you use this uh, on, on your body, otherwise you uh, take this from your and you have a string here and you can have it in, in your leg pocket for example. You still have to attach it to your body somehow. Yes. And how does the transceiver work? It's a transceiver and a, it's transmitting and transceiving. So you, I can find, if you have the another transceiver, I can find you if you are under the snow. Uh, most important stuff to think about when you buy a transceiver is that it's, it's digital mm -hmm. with three antennas. So talk me through uh, this specific transceiver a bit. Yes, this is a Black Diamond Guide uh, BT. BT stands for um, uh, Bluetooth. Uh, and this one have a long range, it's 60 meters, which is very good. The, the Bluetooth thing is that, that you can upgrade the, this uh, transceiver yourself okay. with the Bluetooth and your phone. 
How about phones and transceivers? Yes, phones and transceivers don't go together. So the phone should be at least 50 centimeters from this one or, e or otherwise shut off. Especially when in search mode, it's very important that you don't have your phone yeah. next to it. So the transceiver runs on batteries, um, which means it can wear out. How much is a minimum percentage of battery uh, which you can have before you head out to the slopes? My limit is 60%. Because uh, when you have it in, in send mode, it doesn't uh, take much battery uh, energy. But when you put it in search mode... So it wears out quite fast. Yes, so you need something extra there for search mode. So that pretty much sums up the safety equipment, which is a must-have for all people riding off pist. Uh, but we still haven't talked about uh, one more thing. Uh, Reco, which, uh, which is you know, uh, applied in both this jacket and your jacket. Important to point out that this kit and the Reco kit doesn't uh, go together, but they're both, uh, you know, uh, there for your safety. And Rickard from the Swedish Mountain Rescue Team will talk a bit more about the Reco system. Reco is a search system som vi använder oss av inom fjällräddningen och alla skidorter med lavinproblematik runt om i världen. Och för oss inom sökpatrullerna så är det absolut det viktigaste att den som försvinner är sökbar. För det första så krävs det att du som skidåkare är utrustad med räckoreflektorn. Och räckoreflektorn är insydda i vissa skidkläder och även ingjutna i vissa pjäxer. Och det funkar så att vi i den organiserade räddningstjänsten använder oss av detektorn som skickar iväg en signal som studsar mot din reflektor som du har i din jacka. Vi kan ju testa här nu då och eh, prova på filmarens jacka om man har räck och reflekter på sig i sin haglövsjacka. Här har jag ingen signal. Här har jag signal. Sen har vi en stor räckodetektor som man kan hänga under en helikopter där man kan söka väldigt stora områden under väldigt snabb tid i skog, mark, fjällmiljö året runt. Det handlar ju inte bara om att hamna under laviner som de flesta tänker på när det gäller säkerhet vid off -piståkning. Du kan ju bli fastklämd mot ett träd i en lavin, du kan ha gått vilse på fjället eller du kan ha skadat i en fjällsluttning. Om du då har en räckoreflektor på det, då kommer vi att kunna hitta dig antingen med helikopter eller med den handburna enheten som du söker med. Thank you very much, Rickard. We're back here on the top of Ola Skutan. I'm about to head out with my uh, all my safety gear, and I'm 100% searchable right, right now, right? Yes, uh, and the transceiver and record doesn't work together, but they don't disturb each other, so you can still use them at the same time. You always want to have them both. And that sums up the safety episode of the Freeride Academy. And stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you later. <laughs>